When you are getting ready to run the robot arm program, you need to position the robot arm so that you know where it is, and you need to position the motor so that it's open, right? Um, to do that, so there is, um, you go to this screen, and I will get back so that you can see how I got there. Usually you're on the program menu. You want to tab over twice so that you get to this one with the with the little um, dots, boxes, and then you go down to motor control. Select it, and if you press the button in the middle, you'll toggle between A and D and B and C. A in this case happens to be the medium motor. Pressing left and right will make things happen to it, I think. I think. Oh, pressing up and down. Oh. Now yours is having a little bit of a funny thing because both of your uh, things are going the same way. I think there might be a problem with the construction of the arm because it it's like doing this and then this, not this. But I'll take a look at that. And um, so that's the first thing. Um, you have to work with them. You have to decide the sequence of the arm movements. What is the starting position? So this will help you to orient the arm to the starting position. In this case, I'll go to B and C, and I will um, do right and left. Okay, so we'll call that the starting position, right? And then um, we have a little problem to fix here. And, but I wanted to show the motor control. Okay, let's take a look at the little problem we got. Okay, looking at the way it's constructed here, I think that, see this axle goes into, I believe, the center of this gear. This axle goes into one of the little pinholes, not into the center. So... I don't know if that's the case, if that's a problem, but I'm going to move the axle into the axle hole, not the pinhole, and then try again. Also, the positioning of these, here they're, um, they've, they've got one hole on either side of this, and on this one, the pins are the little red beams they are both on the same one so I think that needs to be fixed so the instruction is run medium motor A at 50 percent for 90 degrees download and move to folder. Oops. Here we go. So it does something. So what I think we need to do, actually it's a closing action it does. First we have to open it, then we have to close it, right? So this is all part of logic that you on how does the robot arm work? How does it pick up? First it opens, then it goes down, and then it closes, and then it goes up, right? Okay, now we're going to do it so that it opens, and I think that's what I did, and then moves the arm a little bit up, I think. Opens 
and then did that move anything? Um, let's do that again. So there's not a lot of power going on. There might be something wrong with the way this is connected. Let me look. Okay, I figured it out. It was because I had, I was trying to move the motor in the wrong direction, the B motor for the robot arm. So here we go, put it into projects and the Oh, now it goes down. Okay. Mm. What the problem is, this, the motor is attached to these tiny gears. So 90 degrees of a tiny gear is like about three things. Here you wanna do a lot of rotations because one of these gears, I think that's eight, is five of these rotations, I think. I think it might be five, it might be more eight, is um, one of these. So let's try to move this one time around, which might be too much. Maybe I'll make it four rotations. Okay. Hmm. Well, it moved a little bit, not much. Try again. Okay, I renamed it because there was some confusion. Okay, I thought I was gonna have to go to the studio to get parts but I had fiddled with this area right here to make sure that the gears were all aligned and secure. And then I ran it just to check because I thought maybe we needed to add some parts here, but it worked. <laughs> okay, I'm good. I'm gonna um, do a minus 90 here to set it down again and then move on. To make it easier to reset the motors, I made a little program, reset all motors, and this is it. Okay, now let's run the other one again. So, robot arm. Okay, so that is rope and arm B going up. Yay. Uh, so that now we're going to add rope and arm C, but we're going to reset it first. For robot arm C, let's look at what we're doing down here. And we again have a small gear going to a big gear. So in order for it to turn, um, we are going to have it turn more rotations um, because the arm is connected to the big gear. And if we want the arm to turn um, say 90 degrees, we probably need to make the, um, the gear turn like, um, mm, one and a half rotations. So let's try that and we'll see. So we're going to change degrees to rotations and 
we'll do 1.5 and then there are two things at this one we might need a hundred percent power but we could try it at 50 percent power for now so the reasons we are doing this is this the small gear the motor turning the small gear and turning the the small gear turning the big gear is a gear train or a gear assembly and it helps to increase the forces um increase the forces to increase the motor capability if the motor tried to turn this all on its own and that's certainly <laughs> not right now that certainly is something that the kids could try is to create a gear assembly where all of this weight is on the motor you might find that it couldn't turn it so um, you need the step up with that the gear small to big gear ratio helps uh, you could talk to a mechanic to see maybe um, to talk about that whether that is the case that's how I believe it works that's why you have a small to big one here and uh, to just to enable it to even be possible because otherwise you have to have a really strong motor and we don't have that right now and then um, so that's the that's the gear ratio okay so now we did rotations and we're gonna try again oh we need to reset see what's going on here um, so we go back home we go to reset robot motors Okay, so reset the motors. Good. Now, okay, I thought I included the um, the turn. Good. So here we said run large motor C at fifty percent. Pause until large motor C ready. So C didn't go, so that my next thing would be to make sure all my connections are good because maybe something didn't work. I'm going to hang up for now. So on the second one, when we tried to do the third motor, nothing happened. So I think the reason is because the large motor, C, was set to 50%. And it just wasn't enough power for the um, for the motor to be able to go. So just all right, we'll try that first because I think it's important for us to see that as we go. Okay, it still did not turn this sufficiently or at all I don't know so now the next thing is to make sure that all these connections are good pairing the design to what they have just to let you know these things are out of place because this touch sensor here would never get used well might it I'm not sure but anyway it things look a little odd it's not exactly the design. I'm not saying that that's necessarily not going to work. Just a note. Now I am going to try to run the BNC motors. Okay, so it can go. That's good. All right. I don't know if when I was resetting to testing the connections, making sure that that is seated, that that did something, but hey, that's a good start. So now let's go. Okay. Let's uh, get out of here. 
And let's go back to the program control. Okay, so it's still not turning it, but I have proven that the motor can turn. And it's not turning it when I do that. So let me try more rotations. One of the things that occurs to me is that maybe I have gone too far and something is stressing here, like one of these wires is catching, or it could even be this, watch, you know, I'm trying to turn it and then there's this wire. I don't know, but um, we just have to check these things because um, it shouldn't, I think it should at least be able to go a little bit further because it's supposed to turn that way, right? But let's check that. So I went back to motor control and I'm just checking to see whether, you know, I have how much range I have. Oh, okay, see there, that tells me I've gone too far in something and I'm not, like maybe this is causing something to happen here. So I wouldn't go beyond the right angle um, well, that sound is a gear slipping, so let's try it again. Do you see what's happening to the wires? Okay, right? When that happens, you stop, because the gears are slipping. You're going to shred the gears. This looks suspicious. This, in this position, will be obstructed by this guy, although it looks like it could go further. This looks like it was intended to hit here and stop. So that means that the arm is intended to go in that direction. But I don't know that it's causing a problem with this right now. <clears throat> but it's something to note that when this turns here, this causes the arm to stop, or there's this, if you add the logic, it will cause the arm to stop because it'll hit there and it'll say, okay, I've gone far enough, now pick it up, right? All right, I'm working on this again, and I think I know what's happening. The, this command to this uh, motor isn't working, and I think the reason is it's because the command to this one is beyond the capability of it completing. So we said, I think it was four rotations. Now I'm gonna set it to, um, I'm gonna set it to, oh, it's minus four rotations. I'm gonna set it to minus, say, two, just so it goes up a little bit. So here we are. I set it to minus four. Oops, I have to be careful with these little buttons on here. I'm gonna do the download. All right, the robot is booted up. Now we're gonna go back and we're gonna do the download again. I think it's connected, so go here. Um, Drag this over to projects. Good luck. Woohoo! Now, obviously, we made it move too far, but isn't that awesome? Yay!